All right, so this is the uh, brew kettle with the uh, thermos thermometer on it and this is a new valve this is a G2 valve we'll check that out later uh, everything else is pretty much the same the kettle does look a little different than the 15 previous one so I'll take a look at that again on the uh, side here you have a Gauge. I'm just noticing that the other side is upside down. What's interesting? Maybe it's supposed to be like that. I'll have to check on that. So, I think they put it in. A, <laughs> I'm not sure why that that would be upside down. But uh, we'll call it. anyway, um, comes with the. This comes with the uh, Blickman thermos. They call it a thermometer. It's a thermometer. It's the same one as you'll get on the uh, any other kettle. Not because it does have this uh, feature, but this uh, will not. I'll have to turn it around this way because I like I like to look at it from the top. So um, looks like it works fine right now. Uh, be sure to put this heat shield on right here. This heat shield keeps uh, everything from melting away. Very important. Don't forget that. This goes on a uh, leg like that. Slides in a little hole. And I believe you can get, you can probably get more of those somewhere that is called your local retailer or whatever. So uh, you'll see these new handles. These are ceramic, nylon, or something. They mentioned it on his website. Um, not, uh, I think that'll be okay, but you still can't lift the pot up when it's full. It's very dangerous to do that. So uh, now we're going to, I've got this all done. I have the, I have to adjust the feet from the 15 to a 20. Um, so I'm going to uh, give this a once over leak test and uh, we'll try firing it up one time just on the, this alone then we'll put the, the top on later. <clears throat> Hello YouTube. I'm back here with the uh, Blickman. Uh, this is the Brew Easy. That's fully assembled now. Um, I got uh, the pump situation right now is just temporary. Um, we'll be getting something else to make that work. But uh, again, here is uh, the top kettle is uh, 15 gallon capacity. The bottom is 20. And the uh, desired brew level is about 10 gallons. You probably could do uh, a little more than 10 gallon batch with this, but uh, that requires a little bit more extra malt. And uh, you see right now, I've got the, the burner on, and the burner's hooked up down here. You see that the top tube here? I will open this later. Uh, that's This will recirc the, the wart all the way through. That's kind of a nice little setup here. Everything they give you is stainless steel. Uh, the the uh, right now I don't have a, enough water to register for the actual temperature of the boil, but since it's boiling, I really don't need a temperature accurate on that. Uh, on this one, I will, but it will fill up. So this is the the top part. Also has a sparge valve. You'll see that the sparge valve come in, and and that kind of regulates how much uh, your flow is. When it gets to a certain level, it'll shut off. And you'll see the false bottom there that came. I had to buy that, but it's a pretty good unit. I put the lid back on just to keep the heat in. And in the garage, I, I know, and I'll open the uh, doors here just to it's barely started. So uh, this is the first wet test with just plain water. Blickman Breezy with the uh, G2 20 gallon kettle and a 15 gallon. Okay. Um, back I'm at uh, about 162 this is a straight water on the top and about one, 160 on the bottom but the bottom one isn't accurate because the water isn't quite hitting the thermal well so I'm gonna have to figure something out for that I think I'll get a another thermo thermometer on the outside anyway 
Uh, it's probably pretty close. Uh, now I just shut the uh, turn here. There you go. I shut the gas off uh, down low. Now we're getting a little too hot. So this is where I probably stop the uh, recirc and just let it sit. So you gotta. It's not just sit and forget it, but it's it'll get there. All right, this is an actual brew day. This is an experimental uh, first brew. We have a Vienna Lager. Um, we'll just go over ingredients. So some people like to know that. So, seven pounds of Vienna. Malt, uh, five pounds of dark Munich. One pound of flaked corn, 12 ounce care pills, and uh, one pound of 120 with, uh, crystal malt. So, that's enough for seven gallons. Now, what we have here is, uh, you'll see that this, this temperature down here reads 112 and I'll put a digital if it goes to the bottom just to make sure and it's 113, 114. You see it going up. Now this is the secondary kettle. This is the mash tun. It's lagging behind a little bit but I think uh, with some adjustment I should be able to uh, I should be able to get that going. So. Um, that's what we're looking at. It's it's kind of lacking a little bit. So what I think I'll do is uh, this is the first time. So what I'll probably do now is open up the valve and uh, or maybe close this valve. This valve will just feed back in to the kettle. So we'll figure it out. And anyway, that's uh, looks like it's pretty close. Not too far off. Um, at about uh, and the temperature you're reading about the same. So I guess I'm I'm actually hitting. Uh, the thermal well right now on this bottom kettle. So here's a, another view. So that's the whole thing right there. You can see the pump. Now I've got everything kind of laying around right now. I don't need the, the chiller, but I got it sitting there just ready. And you'll notice on the uh, this, uh, this pipe right here, this tube comes out, goes into the pump. Through the pump, there's a valve here. You need you need to put one of these on. It goes too fast without it. And then this goes back up to recirculate. See, so right back up there. Get back a little bit here so you can see the whole thing. So you see the entire thing there. So right now we're just doing recirc. We're not doing any kind of cooling. Uh, one thing I am concerned about is the proximity of this hose. And this heat shield, it seems to be okay right now. I mean, I can touch it. It's not at melting temperatures, but it's still something I think you want to keep an eye on. Looks like we're at 120, about 119. And so we're a little bit off to see. So this one says 123. So I'm going to go with the top. So um, I did want to mention the boil volume. Uh, what I did was uh, they want you to put half of what you would want to use. Uh, so I've got a seven gallon batch, so I decided to put uh, about 12 gallons, 11 or 12 gallons of water to start. So this is gonna be, the bottom kill is gonna read uh, a little bit less because it's pumping a little faster now, but it's it's right around five and a half. I probably wanted a, a six and a half when I get done, but it's, it's close enough. You go up here, and this one's right at six and a half, so, um, you can't really see that, but go around a little bit here. So there's the six, six and a half, and you'll see the boil volume right there. Right there. I put my finger on it. So you're, I'm at just above six and a half, almost seven. So, but this will come back down. It'll equalize out just fine, I think. As long as you don't boil this thing dry, you're going to be fine. And this is where uh, the external thermometer comes in because this no longer will reach. I mean, it's got to be at least uh, seven and a half for this to reach. Now, I'm not going to drill another hole, so that's just not going to happen. Uh, so we're at, go uh, back up here, we're at 142. And I'll tell you what, this thing is heating up really, really fast. Um, and it's lagging quite a bit. So I'm going to. Uh, shut down the heat a little bit and let it catch up. 